Movies have scenes, operas have curtains, deck decks have a logic behind it. Welcome to Card Gamers Guild's new series, Decks the Logic. In this series, we will talk about why we run certain cards over certain cards in our deck decks, and what other cards you could play in place of them. So last week's deck tag was about the Drag Driverless Drag Hard Reward. And I'm going, to, I'm going to go through this really quickly because I hope that the viewer knows most if not all of the card effects in the deck. So basically our last week's deck is the Drag, high, drag Driverless Drag Hard Reward. So what does this guy do? This guy, he recycles your dead units. He allows you to strike for free and you get Superior Call, a very, very pre pretty decent card. So the logic is we have, we have to play cards that have an advantages on call effect and we want to recycle them over and over, over and over again and just keep Superior Calling them out. So by far the easiest part of this deck to understand is actually the Great Force. So let's go over them first quickly. For Great Force, we run 3 copy of Aurageyser Dragon and 1 copy of Aurageyser Damned. The reason of this is just very simple, it's just because they are just excellent good strikes and they are good even on the first turn, that's the main point. So the problem about this card is some of the newer players will say that it's very 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 costly. Yes, I agree with them. So as, as a budget replacement, the Trial Deck Dragon will get its job done very very well. So speaking of the Trial Deck Dragon, I'm actually not quite sure of the name, you know, because the name is Kanibaru Dragon. So Kanibaru, is it Carnival? But Carnival sounds a bit too Pale Moon, right? And Cannibal sounds a bit too violent, so they went with Carnival Dragon. This guy is just insane. Killing one of your own units to destroy two of theirs, even though they choose, is just madness. And if they couldn't do it, front row plus 4k. It's just mad. It's just too good. I'm going to run running one copy in a deck because I feel that one copy is enough. And I actually don't have the slot to run more copies of it. But if you don't have money for Aura Geysers, do consider playing a full playset of him. Next up, we are running two copies of Spectral Blaster Diablo. So Spectra is a resender. He'll net you four cards. That's the main point. He has the offense and he'll net you four cards. So that's the point. We're just running him for that reason because netting extra cards considers as hand advantage. Next up, we're running four copies of Phantom Blaster Diablo. So this deck, this card is just the best Shadow Paladin strike so far. And we have that, we play that stupid little combo in our deck, which I'll talk about the Blaster, the Blaster Dark Diablo retiring combo. We do play that combo in the deck, so definitely running four copies of him. As for G Guardians, we are running one Scry You because screw you, I don't have the time to get the extra plot makers. Two plot makers because they are really good G Guardians. One Dismal because since our all our cards offend our opponent, opponents that much, they want to get rid of them as soon as possible, but then we deny them using a Dismal. And once the breeze to put up a finger against those jackasses who like to start at grade 2. Next up, we'll talk obviously about our grade trees. So our grade trees, we run obviously the four copies of the Drag Hard Luart, which is pretty self-explanatory. One copy of Blaster Dark Diablo because we do run that combo and plus Blaster Dark is my Bunshin, so if I don't run him, I'll be betraying myself and him. And of course the new Desperate Dragon, Durmut. Now people are complaining that Durmut is a 10k base and he's horrible, but to be honest, he's not. Because the thing is, Desperate had an issue is if Desperate runs into denials, into heterounds, into negro lilies, you'll get into trouble because they'll get rid of that thing. But with, with uh, Durmut, I attack and you will destroy it, but as long as I pay the cost, the ability will still resolve and you will run out of the rearguards to pay for Phantom Blaster Diablo's defending cost. So definitely running 3 copies of him. And plus, he has no counter blast. Why not? Next up, we'll talk about our grade 2 lineup. Our grade 2 lineup is our offensive lineup. Well, off offensive here has two definitions and two meanings. First, it's very aggressive. Second, it offends the hell of our opponent just to guard it. So obviously, our grade 2, we run 
four copies of Morphessa. Okay, there are only two copies here because I'm too broke to get the other two copies. And the reason we're running Morphessa is because she's really insane, insanely good. She's 14k, 14 plus 7 is a magical number, it hits 21. But if you cannot afford Morphessa, you could actually run Bell Bereaves, the promo 12k heater, or Lea Fail from the trial deck. But the problem with Lea Fail is because since we're running knees in the deck, if you run Lea Fail, 9 plus 11 is 20. 20 isn't a magical number, so you will la fail in forcing a 15k guard from your opponent. And Morphessa on hit, she superior calls you stuff with, with the cost of a command color blast, so there's additional pressure for your opponent to guard. And we are of course running 4 copies of Grozny, because Grozny is just damn good with, with uh, Luar, he's consistently a 15k, so definitely running 4 copies of him. He's very offensive, your opponent wants one him dead. And we're running 2 copies of Hatsune Miku, because she's really good in case you have nothing on your field left to sacrifice for Luar's superior call. You don't have to use a superior call on that turn, you use uh, Miku's uh, weaker superior call. So this is our great tool lineup. Other things that you could consider running the grade 2 is Hoel because since all our grade 4s are Diablo, so he will act as additional Grozny or Dark Saga Painter because you can fetch him out using using the superior cards you have in your deck because you have so many grade 4s with Diablo in the card name. So next up we'll talk about grade 1, the bread and butter of the deck. So the grade 1s we run Two copies of Strike Forder just for insurance, it's just pretty simple. If you don't run it, you could just increase the other cards that I run in my great ones. Four copies of uh, Perfect Guard G's because one, I have I cannot find Astras, two, I have no money, three, we're running Spectrals, so Spectrals eat Counter Blast, so we are running Team to free up our Counter Blast. Then we are running four copies of our Luat Searcher, Abyssal Owl. This guy is good because you get a search for Luat. Number two, you can counter charge when he dies and you could just keep on rinsing him out with Luat's uh, strike skill. And two copies of Nis. Nis is just here to fight against Link Joker because if Link Joker can't lock your front row, it'll be an arrow to the knee for them. Get the joke. Anyways, the 9k that he gets when he's called out is just pretty mediocre and most of the time you're not going to use that unless you are you just want to you are in desperation or you just want to end your opponent. And of course 4 Night Sky Eagles because a consistent 11k on the board that can be recycled is just pretty insane. So this is our great one lineup. Things that you can consider running is Sword Breakers but the problem I don't run Sword Breaker is because I have no soul. So I'm not running Sword Breakers. And you could run Kahedins if you run if you run Hoel in your Great Two lineup, but I'm not sure too sure about that. So this is our Great One lineup. Next up, I will talk about my Trigger lineup. For Trigger lineup, it's a little bit weird because I'm running only three draws and three Kaneki stands. The deal about running three draws is because there are only three cards in your entire deck that is up soul, so you need to get one of them into your soul if you're going to use all of them. And plus, I feel that Kaneki Kun is uh, more important in this deck because all your all your strikes are heavy eaters. So if you run two, there's a very high chance to damage check them out. So running three is just very very safe. So I'm definitely running three. And of course, we are running four copies of heals and for the G Guardians and six copies of criticals because Bushi thinks that second critical is a very viable skill. So another thing you could try packing in in your grade one grade, grade zero lineup is the crafting stands, but I don't like them because you need to call from hand and they only activate on ritual. So it's not that good, and I prefer Kaneki over crafting. So the starter, the starter of the deck is Nisa. She's just really good because rest her two units plus four k. She's just hyper hyper offensive. She offends the opponent. She bumps up the unit. Why not, right? But if you want to want to have a soul, it's better to run Conra over Drag Prince Root because I personally don't like Drag Prince Root because the effect that he gives you is just pretty mediocre. Conra helps you recycle your stuff, so recycle your stuff and fodder up for ritual and he goes to soul, so Conra is much much better. You could try running You could try running David just for the extra sack, 
but then I would actually suggest Nisa over anything else. Plus, she's just Hasune Miku's little sister. And are you sure the name is Nisa? Because I, I'm pretty sure her name is uh, Iliasville. So I guess I've covered up everything about the deck. So do you guys actually want me to crack lame jokes while I do this because I'm not a very good joker? Just comment down below. I hope you guys like this series and just to clarify something, some people ask me why I don't play Jack Trevor Luart because I like, I like to win but I like to win my own way. I don't like to copy decks. I don't like to do things that people do frequently. So the thing is I'm not playing Jack Trevor Luart is because of that reason. The second reason is because uh, I don't have the time and money to find them. But I'll definitely use him in my other deck profiles, especially Witches, because that's one weird build that I want to try out in the future, once I get my Track Travel Luats. So, thanks for watching my new series. I hope you guys like it. Just, if you have any suggestions, please comment down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.